wife asked for an open relationship, so I tracked her affairs, served her divorce papers and blocked her everywhere. My wife, 37 female got a new job about 4.5 months ago, and she also made some new friends. I, 36 male didn't really like them. They were all hardcore feminists, professional victims, and SJW, social justice warrior types. These are the kind of women who would yell at you for opening the door for them, or for not opening the door for them. You can't win either way. In the beginning, I sort of laughed it off, but during the last two months, I noticed some disturbing changes in my wife. We've been married for 11 years and have two kids, a 10-year-old daughter and an 8-year-old son. Things progressively worsened. She began accusing me of all kinds of nonsense, like being born evil because men historically suppressed women. Say what? Whatever I did for her, things she would normally appreciate, suddenly became reasons to fight. It was all nonsense. I tried to be patient. These arguments usually ended with me saying something like, but I haven't done anything wrong toward you. The only thing I'm guilty of is loving you. That would usually send her murmuring, but the next day, she'd return with the same argument, slightly altered. Then, about five weeks ago, I had this sharp gut feeling that something was seriously wrong. One night, she came home late without telling me beforehand. I couldn't reach her phone, and when she returned, she was rather drunk, acting distant and cold. The next day, she brushed me off, claiming I was being controlling and reading too much into things. This happened a few more times. I tried to snoop on her phone but didn't find anything definitive, though I suspected she had deleted a lot of messages. I did, however, find a thread between her and one of her new friends, where they were discussing how she should approach me about asking for an open relationship. I immediately knew what my instincts had been telling me, she was cheating. In the thread, my wife said she planned to talk to me about it on what is now the second Monday of December. My kids were with their grandparents to celebrate Christmas, and we were both scheduled to join them today. So, anyway, she brought up the conversation during breakfast, as if it were a casual, out-of-the-blue question. What do you think about an open relationship? Luckily, I was prepared. I had been reading a lot on Reddit, and I knew there was no way of saving this. My best possible outcome was to get out of it with some sliver of pride and self-esteem intact. From here on out, it was all about protecting myself and the kids. I didn't scream or yell. I went straight into a jaw-clenched interrogation mode. She had been cocky up until this point, but that evaporated immediately when she saw the look on my face. Me, who is he? Her, what do you mean? She tried to look innocent, as if she didn't understand. Me, if you want to have this conversation, don't treat me like an idiot. At least be honest. If you can't be honest, what's the point of this conversation? Her, what do you mean? Me, if you lie to me now, we cannot have the discussion you want about our relationship. I can tell you're hiding something, it's obvious. So, who is the guy you're effing? Her, I'm not. Me, oh my god, it's more than one. Her, who? Ah, uh, me, don't. Just don't effing lie. You've just destroyed my trust in you. I can tell you're lying. Either you're honest, and we talk this through, or I divorce you. Our marriage ends right now, no arguments, no discussions, no nothing. Just divorce. Do you understand? Her, but, me, say it. Do you understand? Do you understand that if you lie, I will divorce you? Say it. Do you understand that I already know a lot? I can read you like a book. If I catch you lying, we are over. Tell me you understand. Her, I, I understand. She proceeded to tell me about two one-night stands while out with her friends. I asked for their names, whether they were married, and if she used protection. Both men were married with kids. Then she told me she was planning to sleep with a colleague at work and intended to pursue this because it's good for her and I don't have any right to control her. What the F? I asked about the colleague and got his name, his wife's name, he's also married. But according to my wife, in an open relationship like she wants us to be. She continued, saying she would set me up with some of her friends, one of whom was apparently really keen on me. What in the actual F? I've seen this friend, and I wouldn't touch her with a barge pole. I told her I wasn't interested. I asked for her phone, and she showed me the pattern to unlock it. While she went to the bathroom, I locked myself in my office. She freaked out, banging on the door, while I ran recovery software on her phone to retrieve deleted content. Within 30 minutes, I had loads of painful evidence. I also installed a spying app from an online service. When I came out, I handed her the phone and told her to leave. She argued a lot, but I barely responded, only giving single word replies. She didn't seem remorseful at all through this. She yelled at me, claiming I was controlling her and holding her back, just like men always held women back. She screamed that I never loved her and that she had every right to do this. She expected me to accept it, saying it wasn't a big deal. I didn't argue. I hardly said a word, just packed her stuff while she circled around me, shouting. I ended up at the front door, standing silently until she ran out of steam. 
In the end, she reluctantly went to her parents' house. On her way down the stairs, I told her she was single now and could do whatever she wanted. I wasn't controlling her anymore. My lawyer would be in touch in January. When she turned to respond, I slammed and locked the door. Later, I watched her discuss it with her friends. They were telling her how strong she was for demanding what she was entitled to, and that she deserved better than me. They said my threats were empty, and that I wouldn't follow through. You wanna bet? What really worried me was when they told her that if needed, she could just accuse me of domestic abuse. One of them explained how she had screwed over her ex-husband by accusing him of abuse and taking everything from him. I've since ordered cameras to install around the house. I know now that I have to record everything. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I've never even threatened her in any way. Then she started messaging her affair partner, AP, to meet up. They agreed to meet at a hotel. I was absolutely stunned. I went online and found the AP's wife. It didn't take long, and she accepted my friend request on Facebook. I told her everything, including the fact that they were currently meeting at the hotel. She thanked me and hung up. A few hours later, I received a video from her. She had gone to the motel and confronted them. From the screaming, it was clear this wasn't the first time her husband had cheated. You effing idiot. You do this to me again. To the kids again. I told you we were over if you ever did this again, you bch. She filmed my wife getting dressed on the edge of the bed. I threw up when I saw that for the first time. The AP's wife slapped her and cursed her out. I sent my wife a message, telling her that I saw the video from the hotel and that I never wanted her near me ever again. It's like she sees our interactions as some sort of competition, where she believes she is winning. She's totally delusional. I can't understand any of it. It feels like she's disconnected from reality, like she doesn't really understand that we are divorcing. I logged into my wife's family WhatsApp group and informed them that we are divorcing due to her infidelity. I thanked them for making me feel welcome and part of the family before disconnecting from the group. I've received a few calls and messages from her side, but I haven't read or responded to them. I just don't have the energy for it. I called my parents and told them everything. My father even messaged my wife, telling her she wouldn't be welcome for Christmas. Now I'm at my parents' house, and I've spoken to my boss, who is giving me time off until mid-January to sort things out. I've been monitoring my wife's increasingly frantic conversations with her new friends. I don't think it has dawned on her that she's lost her family. Her marriage is over, and that her new friends and affair partner don't really care about her. She has sent me many messages, and she even showed up at my parents' house, demanding to celebrate Christmas with us. My father threatened to call the police if she didn't leave. Now, I'm googling divorce lawyers, crying my heart out. I think I've been in shock, but the pain has hit me hard since arriving at my parents' house. I can't make any sense of it. It hurts so much to read her chats and interact with her. I've only responded to her messages twice. Me, it doesn't matter what you say, I don't know who you are. You are not my wife. My wife would never destroy my heart and soul while smiling. We are getting a divorce. I don't care what you say or what you want. You have no influence or right to demand anything from me ever again. We are over. Me, like I said, you are not my wife. I don't know you. My wife would never condemn our children to the pain and suffering of growing up in a broken home. You, whoever you are, seem proud of what you've done. My wife was loving, caring, and considerate, my best friend. You are a self-obsessed, self-absorbed abomination. The messages stopped after that last one. The pain is absolutely unbearable at times. I wish this had never happened. I wish I could go back to how things were before, but I just can't do that to myself. This is the worst Christmas ever. I couldn't help myself and explain to the kids that mommy doesn't want to be a family anymore, that she wants to be with other men and that we're getting a divorce. They are naturally distraught. Thankfully, my mom and dad are here to help. They're showering the kids with love and affection. While I'm a complete mess, I will try to get back on my feet for the kids' sake, but I'm not going back to her, ever. I wish I had waited until after Christmas to tell them, so I could get them into counseling right away. I don't know what came over me. It just blurted out when they asked about when their mother would come home. I'll never be able to look at myself in the mirror if I go back to her. The level of disrespect and callousness in her behavior is unforgivable. I'm lost. I just don't get it. Why does she expect she can demand anything from me at this point? Is she mentally ill or something? Sorry for the incoherent rant, I just needed to get this out. Edit, I've found out that I'm okay with monitoring. I spoke to a lawyer that a friend recommended. The phone is mine, and the subscription is in my name. My wife is using it, but I own both the phone and the plan so I'm okay. It's not illegal to monitor my own equipment. Relevant comments. Dude, I'm so sorry for your pain. 
No words I can offer will make it easier, but I hope for your pain to ease and a speedy recovery nonetheless. I know you'll get tons of advice, but I noticed you didn't mention the financial aspect. If you haven't already, I'd recommend limiting or cutting off any joint accounts and credit cards. When we broke up, my first wife maxed out our credit cards and drained the bank accounts before I could cancel them. I was stuck with the bill on top of child support. At least I didn't have to pay alimony, thank you, Texas. People can do some pretty twisted, horrid things in divorce. But hopefully, your lawyer will advise you better than I can. Best of luck. What struck me the most was how you told your children. I think that was highly inappropriate. This is between you and your wife in terms of the relationship. You are still their father and she is their mother. Telling them that mommy doesn't want to be a family anymore and that she wants to be with other men was simply not okay. It could have waited until everything was finalized. Instead, tell your children that things will be different from now on. Mom and dad won't be living together anymore, but both of you will still love them the same. There are things the two of you need to work out, and once things are finalized, you'll have more information. Your relationship with her has ended, but that doesn't necessarily impact her relationship with her children, unless she makes that choice. They can find out the details when they are older or if they ask. My parents divorced in similar circumstances, and neither side ever spoke poorly of the other in front of us. We didn't find out what had happened until we were adults. Yes, this was a huge mistake on my part. I just couldn't help it at the time, it just blurted out. Since then, I've been very careful with my words. Update. A lot has happened since I last posted. I'm sorry I haven't responded to anyone or provided an update. To be honest, I haven't had the time to read all the responses, there are so many. Truthfully, I've been a pathetic, sobbing mess since my last post. I was obsessed with my wife's chats with her friends, where many insane and hurtful things were said. What finally broke me was when my soon-to-be ex-wife described, in harsh language, how her marriage and especially her children were a burden in her life. She claimed they had prevented her from being a successful woman and living up to her full potential. She described me, her husband, as an oppressive POS who held her back from living a good life. According to her, her family was the reason she didn't have a successful career or enjoy loads of casual sex. I just broke, I couldn't handle it. I spent the next 30-ish hours reading and rereading every email and chat line over and over again. On reflection, she didn't provide any details on how we were burdens or oppressors. It was just blanket statements, with no examples or supporting arguments. In fact, I've never stopped her from doing anything. I pay for almost everything. The minimum wage she collects from her part-time job wouldn't be enough to support anyone. I've supported her hobbies, dreams, and aspirations, even when she pursued one ridiculous class after another, only to drop out halfway through. I made sure to show her love and appreciation every day for what she did for the family. I romanced her, took her out, and was always there for her when she needed me. If this is oppression, I'd like some of it, please. Anyway, I digress. At some point while reading, I just passed out. When I woke up, my three best friends were in the kitchen with my dad, making dinner. I've known these guys since I was a child. Let's call them Mike, Bob, and Frank. My dad had invited them and brought them up to speed. I soon broke down again and was completely out of it until Friday evening. Mike is ex-military, he lost his left arm below the elbow. We were all there for him when he was in recovery, and his wife bailed on him. Luckily, they didn't have any children. Mike has since adopted two kids and has a very nice girlfriend now, so he's doing okay. He set up a Zoom call with his counselor, the same one who helped him during his recovery. Mike helped me a lot to understand what was happening with me emotionally. Even though his counselor specializes in amputees, he told me how most wives sadly bail when their husbands are injured. His stories and examples actually helped me a lot. He asked me to see my soul, identity, spiritual self as having a large part tied to my marriage and role as a husband. That part is dead now, and just like an amputee suffers phantom pain in a missing limb, I will feel phantom pain from the dead part of my identity. We spent hours talking, and I've been steadily improving since. Bob is an executive in some IT security company. He never talks much about his job, I don't actually know what he does, but he's very well off. Bob called a law firm that his company has on retainer, and by Sunday morning, I was talking to a lawyer I could never have dreamed of affording. Bob has always been a huge nerd and was bullet a lot. He told me not to worry about the bill, he'd cover it. He said he was happy to finally repay me for the beatings I took while defending him from bullies. Frank is a teacher at a private school for kids and is married with seven children. Yes, seven. My kids just love him and his family to death. Frank has been making sure my kids are okay and cared for while I get back on my feet and get my ducks in a row. Yesterday was a hectic day. It started with an STD screening early in the morning. 
The BCH gave me chlamydia. Another screening in six months. F. My self-pity party turned into pure effing anger when I found out. That's it for me, gloves off. I'm going for full custody and will give her nothing if I can help it. The lawyer managed to track down the ex-husband of my wife's feminist friend. The one who bragged about how she screwed him over. Apparently, it was very easy to find him through court documents. I wouldn't even have thought of that. I talked to him on WhatsApp, and he thanked me profusely. He also told me everything his ex-wife did to him. And now I know what to expect from my soon-to-be ex-wife, STBXW. It was sickening. I was ready for a fight. But after our chat, I'm preparing for war. It was heartbreaking to hear how he had been homeless and hardly seen his kids in four years, all based on his ex-wife's lies. I accept that I'm at a disadvantage as a man in the court system, so I'll make sure to gather tons of evidence. My lawyer suggested a preemptive strike via a restraining order due to her negative and aggressive comments about males in general, especially for our son's sake. Growing up in a household with an openly anti-male parental figure is obviously very damaging. So I'm going for full custody. I told the lawyer to go ahead. She expects the restraining order to be served today. I had a Zoom call with my STBXW. And keep in mind, she hasn't reached out to me at all since she showed up at the door to argue with my dad. She hasn't contacted the kids or anyone else, so it's not like she cares about any of us. The call was absolutely bizarre. She was all made up, with a massive cleavage on display. It was obvious she was trying to look her absolute best. I haven't seen her that dolled up in years. Throughout the conversation, she kept trying to bait me into a fight, to get me angry. I managed to stay cool. My lawyer had told me what to ask for. Apparently, it's very positive to attempt an amicable divorce before filing for a contested one. I recorded the call, and I even told her I was doing so. Still, my STBXW didn't disappoint. She started with an absurd statement about how there are two types of joysticks, one that's roughly the same size whether it's erect or not, and another type that shrinks and grows based on arousal, one in the actual F, who opens a call with their husband like that. Then she mused about how she was looking forward to the end of current restrictions so she could go out and investigate this more in person. I simply responded that I wasn't interested in her hobbies and that I only wanted to discuss our divorce. She got openly hostile when I didn't take the bait and get angry as she had hoped. At one point, she told me she was going to the bathroom and muted herself. I watched as she conferred with her friends about what to do with me. She cursed me out several times for nothing more than being a man. Throughout the call, I had the strange feeling that she saw this as some sort of game, that she was in control and that I had no other option but to put up with whatever she wanted. We made zero progress on our actual divorce, so I concluded, fine, a contested divorce it is then. By the way, I told her, you gave me chlamydia, and unlike you, I haven't been sleeping with anyone else, so you better get yourself to the clinic. She just frowned at me, like, yeah, right, I don't believe you. I seriously have no idea what's going on with her anymore, and at this point, I no longer care. I sent the recording to my lawyer, and she was shocked, to say the least. Everyone thinks my wife is insane at this point. Maybe she is. Since I own her phone and the subscription, I can legally use the chat logs in court. Turns out it's fully legal to monitor my own device as much as I want. After our call, there was frantic discussion between her and her friends, but I can finally put it aside. I no longer care what they talk about. My lawyer is confident we will win this case unless there's something I haven't told her. So here we are. It still hurts, but I can treat it as phantom pain at this point. I've abandoned feeling sorry for myself, and I'm going for the jugular, no prisoners. I need to protect myself and my kids. I'm good. My kids will be fine, and I'll make sure they get therapy as much as they need. My STBXW will soon be a distant memory, and I'll start building a new, better life. Edit. I found out today that she knew about the chlamydia and got treatment but didn't tell me. That BCH. She was joking and laughing with her new friends about it. F. Update. Firstly, thank you, everyone, for all the feedback, apart from the hacking adverts disguised as comments or PMs. I have blocked those. I get a lot of feedback like, I am strong or winning in some way, or that I am somehow getting out on top. Rereading my posts, I can see that my anger toward the situation filters through, and I could seem defiant and sure of myself. The truth is, I am not. I wish this never happened. I wish my family was still intact, and that I had a long, lazy, comfortable life ahead of me with my wife as the kids grow and start their own lives. No one is the winner here. My wife has gone off the rails, and the entire train is burning in the ditch. I don't know what is wrong with her. She refuses to see medical professionals for possible mental issues, and she is acting like nothing is wrong. 
Still, she shows no remorse or regret. She acts like I am unreasonable for not just accepting whatever she wants, and she has hardly even talked to the kids since D-Day. I am divorcing her, taking action, and moving forward with separating our lives because I have to. Her behavior has left me no choice, and by now, there is no way back. I wish so much that this wasn't necessary. I can never trust her again and I cry myself to sleep every night from my own loss and the fact that my children will now grow up in a broken home. It also breaks my heart that my children, in reality, no longer have a functional relationship with their mother. Question, how do you answer this question from your child? Why doesn't mommy want to see me anymore? Doesn't she love me? How the heck do you answer that? If anyone knows, please let me know, because I sure as hell don't. Every day I wake up and tell myself that my heart is already smashed into so many broken pieces that it can't possibly break anymore, only to be proven wrong all day, every day. My wife still doesn't know that I can monitor her communications, or she just doesn't care. She is 100% convinced that I will never leave her and that my reaction to her behavior is totally unjustified. She keeps talking badly to her friends about me, our marriage, and our children. I don't understand why she hates us so much. We haven't done any of the things she accuses us of to her friends. As I mentioned before, my lawyer won a temporary restraining order against her. There was a hearing yesterday morning, and since there were no new direct threats, it wasn't extended. My lawyer suggested using the fact that she knowingly infected me as leverage to try to get her to agree to an undisputed divorce. I wish we could separate in a reasonable process. I hate the fact that I have to see her as the enemy and always assume the worst possible outcome. If she wanted to leave me, I would be able to live with that. But why force me into this extremely adversarial process? Why does she do her best to hurt the people who used to love her as much as possible in the process? What possible gains can she have from this? I would appreciate any insight on this. It just doesn't make any sense to me. If I go to court, I will probably have to pay her a lump sum for the equity in our house, etc. I will probably not be liable for alimony. And since she doesn't show any interest in the kids, I am hopeful I will win custody of them if it goes to court. Anyway, my lawyer suggested we try to get her agreement for an amicable divorce. I agreed, and we will meet with my STBXW and her representative hopefully this week. The ex-husband who was defrauded by the lying woman spends New Year's Eve with me and the kids. The injustice of the justice system against fathers is just incredible. Now, I have no delusions of receiving a fair process if we go to court. His ex lied her head off, and the court just took it as fact, no proof whatsoever. He has hardly seen his children since. He has been forced to pay unreasonable amounts of alimony and child support, and it's pretty much broken him. He has been contemplating ending things permanently. With the new evidence he gets from me, he has renewed hope. We both talked to my lawyer. She suggested he sits on the evidence until the meeting with my wife and her counsel. If he takes action now, it will show our hand that we have access to all their communications. My lawyer's goal is to divorce me and my wife as soon as possible and as smoothly as possible. Right now, I just hope I can get away from her. If she decides to fight, it can drag on for a long, long time. It's stressing me out, I just need to get free. I will post an update if I get a meeting or if we go directly to a disputed process in court. Update. Sadly, the bizarre situation continues. The meeting with my lawyer and my STBXW was yesterday afternoon. She showed up 30 minutes late. She didn't bring a lawyer, and she claims she doesn't have or need one. Instead, she brought one of her new friends, named censored until after the hearing. My lawyer had given me very strict instructions on how to behave. I was not to react negatively to anything they said. If they addressed me, I was to respond in a non-confrontational manner, or positively, if I could. If my lawyer put one or both of her hands flat on the table, I needed to keep my mouth completely shut. So, they showed up late, no masks, of course. The friend tried to insult me and win me up in any way she could think of. My STBXW did the same. My lawyer was trying to get the discussion going on the subject at hand, our divorce, but they were just joking around. They laughed at their own insults toward me a lot. It was real cringe to watch. It's clear now, my wife still believes this is all a ruse. That there is no way I can divorce her. In her mind, only she can divorce me, and only if she wants to. If she does, she will get everything. I just sat there thinking, what the, is going on? I didn't actually say anything of substance. I only responded a few times, and it was along the lines of, yes, you are probably right, or I really don't know. Finally, they ran a bit out of steam. My lawyer got the word and started putting forward the proposed settlement for an amicable divorce. One of the first things she said was that I was willing to be generous for a quick, peaceful resolution, 
that I would pay her a large lump sum of $60,000 for the equity in the house, investments, etc. My lawyer didn't even finish this sentence before my STBXW got all excited, together with her friend. Nudged by the friend, my STBXW wanted to know where to sign. My lawyer asked several times if my STBXW didn't want to go over the rest of the agreement first. But no, she wanted to sign right away. She started talking about when she could expect to receive the money, and that they needed to get to the pub. So, my lawyer called someone in, whispered something to them, and there was a flurry of activity. An older woman asked for our identity documents, and we were asked to sign two copies. When we were done, the older lady stamped it, and I later found out she was a notary. My lawyer, almost standing on the palm of her hand at this point, thanked my STBXW and her friend and told them we were done. They left, and my wife didn't even bring her copy of the agreement with her. She left it on the table. My lawyer looked at her flat hands and at me. She obviously didn't want me to say anything while they were in the building. When we saw them crossing the parking lot, my lawyer looked at me and said, congratulations. Then she spoke at length about how this was the strangest session she ever had for a negotiated divorce. She told me she would send my STBXW's copy to her after we do a hearing in front of the judge, or if she gets a lawyer that asks for it. Until then, it's forgotten in my lawyer's drawer. So, it looks like, on the surface, I will get through this divorce a lot easier than I first thought. STBXW can still hire legal representation and dispute this. My lawyer told me she would try to call in every possible favor she could think of to get me a hearing with a judge as soon as possible. It will probably be a video call. I have also hired a PI after the advice I got here on Reddit, and he got photos of my wife making out with two different guys at two different bars yesterday and she went to a hotel with one of them. So, I have lots of evidence piled up if I need it. I just hope it's enough if it comes to that. My wife signed to give me full custody, only a one-time payment, no spousal support, no nothing, just $60,000 and I am free. Now, I just have to find the money. I have a plan, and Bob offered to front me the entire amount if need be. I still don't feel like this is real. I fully expect her to pull here's my aggressive lawyer, and I am accusing you of abusing the kids and domestic abuse out of her hat. My lawyer told me to keep a very low profile, pay for everything I normally pay for and don't rock the boat in any way. The advice is, don't talk to anyone we both know. Just sit still and wait. Don't respond to anything. Basically, zero initiative until the hearing. So now, all I need to do is be patient and hope for the best. Update. So, yesterday was the hearing. I'm basically divorced. It will take four to six months for the paperwork to be official. But at this point, there's nothing anyone can do to change the outcome. The only option would be if my wife and I, together, decided to stop it. But that's not going to happen. I am so effing tired. I haven't slept in. I don't even know how many days. So if I'm a bit all over the place, I'm sorry. I just need to get this all out. I need to vent. Hopefully, I can get some sleep after I type it out. My awesome lawyer got me an early hearing, just 12 days after submitting the paperwork. No doubt, she called in some favors on this one. I'm getting off track. From the weekend up until today has been insane. Friday morning, a whole bunch of police officers knocked on my door with a warrant to search the house. I was very confused and worried about the kids, so I asked if I could bring them outside while they searched. Thankfully, they agreed. They didn't tell me much, but I got a copy of the warrant. I was so shaken up I couldn't make much sense of it. I guess everyone who said my ex-wife's behavior was probably substance-related was right. It's safe to say that's a factor in all of this. The cops completely trashed my house. I called my lawyer, and while she spoke to them, the warrant was valid, so there was nothing to be done at the time. I didn't think about it at the moment, but I have cameras everywhere now, in case I get wrongfully accused. I have video and sound of everything, so I could potentially make a claim later if I want to. To be honest, I don't know if I have the energy or will for that. Maybe I'll just draw a line under it and move on. I didn't know it then, but my ex and her three horrible friends drove my car while high and drunk, crashing into a house at high speed. They were all arrested, all of them drunk, with substances on and in their bodies. They were pretty roughed up by the crash. The one in the passenger seat is in critical condition, and they don't know if she'll make it. The ringleader, let's call her Henrietta, is the one who bragged about screwing over and lying about her ex-husband in court. Let's call him Henry. Henry and I have become really good friends, I'll get back to him later. Thankfully, the cops didn't find anything during the search. I gave my statement that my ex doesn't live here anymore, she's staying with her parents. I don't know what she's doing. And no, I didn't give Henrietta permission to drive my car, etc. When I got back inside, I just broke down. The house was completely trashed, and it was the last straw, I guess. The only thing I could think of was to call my dad. 
he brought me and the kids home to stay with my mom. Dad then rallied a whole group, 26 friends and relatives. While I was on the back porch, sobbing and eating my mom's amazing comfort food, they completely cleaned and fixed my entire house. They did every single room, clothes, dishes, furniture, even washed the ceilings and walls. It's never been this clean. They even fixed all the little things like loose door handles. I couldn't believe they'd do something like that for me. I have no idea how I'll ever repay them. I went from feeling devastated to feeling pretty good over the weekend, thanks to them. The cops found more substances at Henrietta's house, and her boyfriend wasn't there, no babysitter either, just the kids alone. CPS took the kids, and Henry won temporary emergency custody on Saturday after showing the judge the chat logs. Combined with the abandonment in the piles of substances, he got custody without much difficulty. Henry is over the moon. He hasn't seen his kids much in the last five years. He had been raising money to fight Henrietta in court, and now this happened. He still needs to go to court to make it permanent, but the odds are really good. Everyone thinks Henrietta will have to serve time, especially if her friend doesn't make it. After that, he'll try for child support and compensation for all the crap Henrietta did. He isn't expecting much, though, and honestly, I think he doesn't want to waste time fighting in court. He just wants to be with his kids and make sure they have a good life. It's clear Henrietta was very neglectful toward them. Bob has been a champ and set Henry up in a rental apartment through a friend. I've realized I know practically nothing about Bob's private or professional life, and I intend to change that. Anyway, I'm off track again. Henrietta was driving when they crashed into that house. They were all pretty banged up, and because of the substances and alcohol, search warrants were issued for everyone's residence. My ex is still registered at my address, and on Sunday, I decided to sell the house and move away as a PM afraid something like this could happen again. Then, on Sunday, I got a call from her parents. Their house got searched too. They had visited her in jail on Saturday, and now they don't trust anything she tells them. Long story short, they came over to talk on Sunday, and it turns out she's been lying to them about everything. The nights she's been out partying and cheating. She told them she was staying with me and that we were trying to work things out. They had no idea what was really going on. They knew she cheated but believed it was a one-time drunken mistake. That's basically what she told them. On Monday, my wife called me, asking if I'd post her bail. It was $15,000 and her parents had already said no. After talking to my lawyer, she drew up paperwork stating the bail would be subtracted from the settlement unless my wife failed to show up in court. The agreement included her mother as the custodian of the remaining amount. My lawyer didn't want my wife to have any excuse not to attend the hearing, which is why she wanted me to post the bail. My ex didn't have much choice, so she signed. She was released on Monday afternoon. According to her parents, she refused to comply with the terms they had set for her to continue living with them. Things like stopping substance use, committing to rehab, having an open door policy, and dropping her bad friends. Apparently, she left their house on Tuesday to stay with some of her new friends. She didn't show up for the hearing, and after showing the judge everything, including the events from the weekend, I won full custody. The settlement is according to the agreement we made. The hearing was quick, only 30 minutes. It will take four to six months for the paperwork to be processed, but in reality, it's done. There's nothing that can stop it now. That brings us to today. I haven't been able to sleep. Everyone has been congratulating me and treating me like I've had some major victory, but it sure as hell doesn't feel like I've won anything. This is just pain. I still love my wife. I know it's over and there's absolutely no way back, but she was my best friend, my soulmate, up until recently. Even though my love for her has been mortally wounded, it's still there. And it hurts like hell. There are no winners in this. I lose, she loses, and most importantly, the kids lose. I don't really have the words for it. It feels like people are asking me to celebrate losing both of my legs, but because I took action, I managed to save half a kneecap while the other leg was still cut above the knee. When people congratulate me, it feels almost like that, like they're commending me for saving part of a kneecap while losing both legs. I can't really sleep, and when I do, I'm torn apart by terrible nightmares that wake me up drenched in cold sweat. I'm complaining a bit here, sorry. Anyway, today I got a call from the hospital. My ex is hospitalized, and I'm still her emergency contact. She's still on my health insurance too. Apparently, there was an altercation. She lost some teeth, broke her jaw and will need to stay in the hospital for observation for a few days. I brought her parents with me. It turns out some of her new friends beat her up pretty badly. Word got out that Henry had chat logs of Henrietta bragging about what she did to him from my wife's phone. 
Her friends assumed my wife had given the logs to Henry, and that's why they beat her up and kicked her out. Amazingly, she still doesn't understand that I have access to monitor her phone. I'll keep things as they are, pay for her insurance, her phone, etc. Until I get the divorce papers in my hand. I won't believe it's over until I'm holding those papers. She has nothing now. She even asked if she could move back in with me. I simply told her, no way in hell. Her mother isn't giving her a single penny unless she gets clean and stays clean for at least a year. They've offered to let her live with them under strict terms, but if she doesn't accept, I don't see how she'll manage. It's the first time I've seen any form of regret from her since all of this started. But I think it's more regret over not being able to continue her crazy lifestyle. She did say, I'm sorry I ruined everything, but I don't think it's genuine. She hardly looked me in the eyes while I was there. It hurt to see her like this. Part of me wanted to protect her, but she's an adult. Her behavior is dangerous and erratic, and I need to protect my kids. She didn't ask about the hearing or the condition of her critically injured friend. She just sat there, seemingly irritated. I still don't understand any of this. She has lost everything, destroyed her family and caused so much pain for so many people. And for what? A buzz in some random sex. I'm going completely no contact until she's been clean for a long time. I just can't deal with all this craziness. Update. So, a lot of people have PM'd me for an update. I was going to post one yesterday, but I just didn't have the energy. I am kind of depressed and very, very tired. I hardly ever sleep, and when I do, I am plagued by nightmares. The good news is the kids are doing better. My dad is a champ. I don't know what I'd do without him. We went to his cabin to ski a bit this weekend, just me, him, and the kids, and it was great. I have basically no contact with my ex. I did talk to one of her friends, the one who was in critical condition. She woke up but is in terrible shape. I spoke with her nurse, who was sad that no one had bothered to check on her. They contacted her family, but they refused to see her. I'm worried that the people who beat up my ex will come for me and the kids, so I asked the nurse if I could talk to her and she agreed. I know I shouldn't have, but I felt I needed to ask her about what happened since my wife started hanging out with them. She began by asking if I wanted a BJ for $20, so that wasn't awkward at all. I offered her $50 instead in exchange for information. Her friends are all hardcore substance users, addicts. Henrietta dragged my wife into their group against the wishes of the other two, convincing her to try substances and party with them. They sold sensual favors to get money for substances. Henrietta was the ringleader. They all preach this strong feminist, my body, my choice stuff, but as she put it, it's all nonsense to protect our egos. We really just p 2 ourselves for money to buy substances. My wife bought into it, and it didn't take long before she was addicted like the rest of them. Once she was hooked, she too started selling sex to pay for substances. It's not easy hearing that the person you loved more than anything turned herself into a p 2 to feed her addiction. It makes sense now why all she wanted was the money. From what I've been told, it's mostly MTH. No one visits her because she's stolen, cheated, abused, and lied to everyone in her life. No one wants anything to do with her. She told me, without blinking, how sad she was that she survived. She has zero hope for the future and looks like death without her makeup. It was painful. I was devastated just listening to her. I cried a lot for my wife's sake. I'm not excusing her, she made the choice to play with this crap, and she lost. Now she will pay the price. She also told me about the guys who beat up my ex-wife, but I'll get back to that later. Henrietta has been charged with death threats, resisting arrest, substance possession, petition, substance trafficking, child abuse and neglect, DUI, property damage, and auto theft. She's been denied bail as a flight risk, so she'll probably go away for a while. At least, I hope she will. Before I go on, I'd like to thank those of you who reached out with experience dealing with addicts. Many warned me that my ex might try to end herself now that the walls are closing in. And you were right, she tried to deliberately overdose. I had talked to her father beforehand, knowing there was a high chance she might attempt something. We decided to monitor her closely. Luckily, she doesn't know that I have live tracking on her phone. While we were at the cabin on Saturday, I got a message from her. It read like a self-slaughtering note. She talked about the addiction, the p how she had let everyone down, and how she would do the only thing she could. I immediately called her dad, and because I have the tracker, I knew her location. Her father rushed out and found her unconscious on a park bench. She was immediately taken to the hospital, pumped, and treated for hypothermia. I dread to think what would have happened if he had arrived just a little later. They have her on methadone now, and her father successfully became her appointed guardian. She can no longer object to treatment. He had her forcibly committed to rehab, and she will undergo sedated detox, likely this week. 
Her father was appointed not because she awed, but because she abandoned her children. Apparently, abandoning your children proves you're not rational, while attempting self-slaughtering is somehow acceptable. Anyway, thankfully, I hadn't cancelled her life insurance yet, so she will get treatment. I've offered to help her father with the finances, as long as my ex isn't told that I'm involved. I've been very scared that the guys who beat up my wife would come after me and the kids. Remember, Henry presented chat logs in court that they believed my wife gave him. I talked to Henry about it, and he decided he'd take care of it since he benefited from the disclosure. Henry is a massive, intimidating man. He grew up on a farm, carrying things since he was a kid, and he looks like he could rip the average man in half. He has scars and a crew cut, and you don't want to mess with him unless you know him. Despite his appearance, he's infinitely patient, gentle, and kind. He will use force if necessary, but it's always his last resort. Anyway, Henry went to the guy's apartment, a real dump by the way. He grabbed the two of them by the neck and told them that Henrietta had given him the chat logs. Since they had hurt someone he knew, they had two choices, either go to the police and confess everything about the assault or face him right then and expect very painful, permanent injuries. As he told it, he was quite hopeful they'd choose option two. Needless to say, they couldn't get to the police fast enough. I no longer worry about them. I've found a new apartment and will be moving soon. Bob came through once again. All in all, I'm very depressed. This weighs heavily on my soul. What keeps me going is my friends and family, and I know I need to stay strong for the kids. My heart breaks for my ex. Despite everything, I don't regret marrying her. I still love her, but I know we can never be together again. She isn't the person she used to be, and there's just too much pain between us. Despite the recent suffering, we had a very good life before all this, and I wouldn't have my children if it weren't for her. I wouldn't give them up for anything. I know it's going to hurt for a long time, but I hope I'm strong enough to get through it. Strangely enough, news of my wife's addiction has helped the kids. It's easier to explain that mommy is sick, and it's going to take a long time for her to get better. She still loves them, and I think they understand that. Right now, I'm sad and tired. Henry is here with his kids, and we're going to watch Madagascar 3. I'm trying to make as many good new memories as possible, and Henry is doing the same. The kids seem to be doing a lot better now. I think we'll be okay. Thank you, everyone, for all your help. This will likely be my last post. Update. My ex passed away. She overdosed while in rehab. We don't know how she even got the substances. One doctor speculated that she swallowed a bag of something, and it burst inside her. No one knows for sure. I won't be posting anymore or answering comments. Thank you to everyone who provided helpful suggestions and support. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you really like our videos, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.